Okay, good morning uh, and welcome to the Mic Drop podcast. Uh, my name's Larry Achampong, I'm an artist and today we'll be talking a little bit about Theaster Gates's current solo show at Tate Gallery in Liverpool titled Amalgam. And with me joining today, uh, we'll also be talking with Margarita, Kevin and also Bella. Uh, so welcome guys and um, yeah just before we, we get into talking about the nitty gritty of the show uh, we come together through uh, two organisations Many Hands One Heart and also Heart of Glass so many thanks to uh, those organisations. Um, so before we get into discussing the show, I thought I'd kind of like mention a bit of a introduction for people who perhaps haven't seen the uh, the show of which I highly personally recommend. Um, the exhibition is created uh, by artist uh, Fiesta Gates, who was born in 1973. Um, he's one of the world's most influential artists. Uh, I personally agree on that as well. Uh, Fiesta Gates' show Amalgam explores the complex and interweaving issues of race territory and equality in the United States. The exhibition takes the history of Malaga as its point of departure. During the 19th century, this small island off the coast of Maine in the United States was home to an ethnically mixed community in 1912 on the borders of the, of the state governor, uh, Malaga's inhabitants were forcibly removed to the mainland. They were uh, offered no housing, jobs, or support. Now, um, having you know made that kind of uh, introduction, I know there's quite a lot going on in the show, and also for yourselves, this is probably you know the first time talking uh, about art within this kind of uh, uh, context. Even for me, actually, in in, in terms of reviewing the show, um, I guess I wanted to kind of start off uh, on a kind of like point by point basis with with each of you individually, what you kind of thought of the show, what you thought of, you know, what you saw or what you experienced. Uh, can I start with you, Margarita? Okay. <laughs> All right, experience, it was a re- So what did you think about what you saw? Did you, was there anything perhaps that kind of really hit you when you, when you went into the show or anything that you perhaps took away that had a, a lasting kind of memory for you? Yeah, the racist though. There was a racist in that. Uh, what you call it? The thing they used to put on people's face and. The uh, uh, what? Would you say is it? What are you talking about? The masks? Are you yeah, the mask. The yeah, or? they used to put yeah. mask on people's uh, face and make them as a slave. Uh, right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Of course. So yeah. the um. I think it's it's within some of the the earlier rooms on the the left as you go into the show, and there's yeah. also the iron brands that mm. are within the uh, the encased kind of frames. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. What 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 kind of what feelings did they bring up for you when you saw um, those those artifacts? My goodness. Um, my goodness. It's, um, it's make me cry and it just was make me cry. I was not happy about that. Mm. Uh, when the white people used to do to black people. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I agree with you, uh, Marguerite, uh, in that for me, I, I felt that the show was uh, highly kind of like emotively charged. Mm. Um, the, the the thing that I noticed straight off was actually the the iron yeah. brands. Yeah, the that, iron brand. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, you know that that you would likely place on 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 animals, mm-hmm. and in that mm-hmm. kind of understanding, that uh, relationship or association mm-hmm. of uh, of of Africans of human beings as animals, as cattle, as mm-hmm. as product, mm-hmm. um, and kind of being faced, you know, being placed face to face with that, um, it it really brought up like tremendous kind of feelings for me of, of, of anger, but also uh, considering how, although, you know, slavery was a, um, uh, that the transatlantic slave trade was something that happened hundreds of years ago, the legacy of that still kind of uh, 
is is embedded within plenty of societies, especially even Liverpool, Liverpool, which was a you know port city itself, um, and 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 how that affects people today. Um, was there anything else for you that kind of you know jumped out, or or you know that that you enjoyed, or maybe you found perhaps even unsettling? No, I was not enjoying, but it because I was not happy about to see that it was using to our people though. Mm. It it just make me feel like uh, it feel it make me feel like um what you call it it's okay maybe we can take a bit of time and you know you can come back to. <laughs> If you know how how you felt about that, uh, Kevin, is there anything perhaps for you that that you took away from the show, the experience that you had? Um, yeah, I that was the first time I heard about Malaga in United States because I thought Malaga is in uh, Spain. Mm, yeah, I, I, there is Malaga in Spain. Well, yes, that was the first time, and uh, I the the exhibition uh, I noticed a lot of. Um, um, segregation you know during that period you mm -hmm. know the uh, black people were forbidden to marry uh, white ladies mm -hmm. there was no interracial marriage then um yeah it was uh, it was something that didn't happen that, during that period but i saw one thing that intrigued me was uh, i saw a couple in one of the um, movies that I was watching, mm -hmm. um, a couple, a white guy who married um, a black lady, uh, despite the prohibition, the law, mm -hmm. the challenges they were facing, he still uh, um, stood by his uh, decision to marry a black lady, and they had a Family, hmm. uh, a lovely I think family. you're talking about the yeah, the Dance of Malaga uh, video installation. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Uh, and did you did you you know? Because I'll, I'll be honest, like when I go to see exhibitions, if I find that a work is too long, like in terms of the video, I kind of duck out for, like straight away. I think I stayed for like two loops. But did you did you stay from the beginning to the end? Or, and 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 you know why was that? If if that was the case for you, I. I think I, yeah, I stood there from the beginning and that was why I, I didn't, I couldn't leave because I was drawn by it. Mm -hmm. I wanted to know what was going on and I was, uh, I was intrigued and I was uh, interested to know and it was really fascinating. Mm. So, I think one of the things that I, I took away from uh, the film was, um, the incredible ability to uh, juxtapose sounds and visuals and quotes, both historical and contemporary, whilst also generating original, um, you know, sounds and visuals. So, you know, you had the scenes where um, uh, Theaster Gates's um, kind of, I guess, uh, musical group, the Monks, uh, are, are playing music. You know, you have one of them that, that are singing. And, and then all of a sudden that jumps straight into a certain point of history in relation to Malaga or even that of the, the, the transatlantic slave trade, which I found to be quite powerful. Mm -hmm. um, where, when, for me, when an artist can, can bring about questions of the past and, and relate them to uh, what's happening in the now, um, that, that can become like a really interesting kind of soup of ideas, which I think came off pretty yeah. well. Um, Bella. What did you What did you think of the show, or is there anything in particular for you that um, you know stood out in, in in any kind of way, shape, or form? Um, to be honest, I don't really like to see like the history, especially when it deals with the sufferings of human beings. What I saw particularly that stood out for me 
because when I saw that metal bar in my mind I thought it was something that was used to like maybe well maybe just uh, uh, what do you call stem the kettles to show that they they belong to someone I didn't know that it, it was used for the human beings and when I heard that it was used on human beings I mean my heart just sank I mean I wasn't there at that time I don't even know how I can't even pretend to feel or know how those people were feeling at that time but the pain I felt inside it was just like somebody just took something and just stabbed me in the heart it, it's just terrible and I just don't understand what what would have made human beings to turn against each other to just treat each other like they are not the same or they are not equal yeah it, it was just a sad thing to see mm. and to know that I'm living in Liverpool now but Liverpool was one of the first port to for people to be transported to wherever they were going or things to be transported to. It's just amazing that, you know, some of these things, you never know that you can someday meet with them. But here I am, mm. I'm in Liverpool. Yeah, I think, again, you know, coming back to that, what I felt was important in, in what that show was able to do was... Um, was to open up conversation around something that I, I personally feel doesn't get to be spoken about that much of. Or if it does, you know, you, you have these kind of skewed points of view within, you know, history books or even the curricula. If, if, if I think about my own personal um, uh, history of, uh, you know, education, primary school and secondary school, I remember slavery being spoken about as a trade in which all people benefited. You know, and um, and that certainly was not the case. Um, Kevin, you look like you want to say something. Yeah, um, what I wanted to say is that, uh, you know, um, recently, um, it's like uh, the history of uh, black people and slave uh, trade has been somehow being eroded or washed away. We don't, we don't see it taught in the schools you know but you have uh, like a holocaust um world war all those things you remembering every year but you don't mm. you don't see um the uh, europeans or american you know celebrate uh black history or slavery you know like they do uh, during holocaust yeah, I, I think I, uh, they're trying yeah. to um, erase the memory of uh, black history from, I don't know. Uh, Bella? You I personally, Kevin, would not agree with it to be taught because just from what happened to me when I went to watch to the, to the cinema, to the art gallery, I, I, it left me with so much pain. I, I, I don't understand if it would be a good thing for people to, for young kids to watch that. Right. It, it, is a, it, it is a good thing for young black kids to know their history, just like the uh, Jews know the history of Holocaust. Even a million years today, you will see, you will be hearing or see things about Holocaust. The Holocaust was horrible, just like uh, um, uh, slavery was horrible. So they still keep talking about Holocaust. I think they should uh, teach uh, about, about slavery or slave trade in, in schools so that even the young black children would know their history. Some kids, Black kids now they don't know they don't know much about black history. They don't if you ask them about about slave trade or some black heroes, Martin Luther King and all those, they don't know who they are. So I think it, it is it should be taught in in yeah, schools so that good. people know yes, this this thing really happened. Just like World War 
I don't know if you've watched uh, 19... What was the name of that film? Is it 19... Uh, 1917. 1917. That's even telling children this is what happened in this time. We fought war. I think they should, you know... I guess one of the things that I even find interesting or peculiar about, you know, even discussions regarding the, uh, the World War is how, again, you know, history is kind of bent in the direction or the favour of that of, um, you know, the, uh, the white elite. Mm. Uh, if you look at the history of, um, you know, the, the world wars, you know, it, if, if you dig deep enough, those wars were, colon they were referred to as the colonial wars. Yeah. You know, various nations, the likes of uh, Germany, the UK, mm. France and so on, they, they argued about which piece of pie, and this pie in which... We're, we're talking about is is that of the uh, the African continent would be divided up, yeah. you know. Um, the uh, e even the, uh, the the Germans they they did experiments on uh, on Africans before the uh, the Holocaust even took place as well. And again, that kind of history, I, you know, it doesn't really get spoken about. And you know, you have to kind of dig deep to try and find these things. I guess where I personally stand on it is I do think that it's important that. Um, the multitudes and, and the complexities of history are, are spoken about or made available because um, without understanding uh, history, you know, these, these problems repeat themselves. Mm -hmm. And even looking at the, uh, the legacy of slavery or even, um, you know, the pseudoscience related to racism, you know, is, is, is entirely, you know, made up. Um, you know, race doesn't actually exist. It's something that white Europeans uh, created for a pseudoscience of which we live underneath today. Uh, even issues regarding, uh, you know, asylum seeking. I, I personally feel that they have a strong relationship and connection to them uh, coming from, you know, parents who uh, came to this country with no papers whatsoever. You know, you can make those links with uh, th those uh, details and so on. And so I think... Um, as difficult as those aspects of history they are to take in, I think they're very necessary uh, for, for people to know about mm -hmm. and to also uh, bridge an understanding as to uh, the types of um, behaviour that we have today, even with regards to like a Bre Brexit, for example, which you know, I won't dig into too deep, but I think, again, there are connections with all of these things. Uh, Margarita, what, what do you think about that? Any point of what was said there, I know I said quite a lot. Yeah, I need it. Um, the history need to teach in school because now our kids, now, our black kids, uh, they think they are white. They are white now. <laughs> they think they are white kids now. They don't even appreciate their mothers. When they with the white kids, they just behave like the white people. They need to teach the history in the school about how the people treat us in 19 something there. So would you say like there's a sense of identity that is that is being lost uh, to, to, you know, for, for young black kids and, and, and kids of colour? Yeah, yeah. How about the rest of you? What do you think about that? Yeah, um, yeah. The it's not only black people, um, the Asians, the, okay. the um, other, other uh, ethnic groups apart from, you know, they, some of them came and they, they, not that they came willingly, they were forced to come and uh, fight the war. Like the Gokas, um, black Africans, Kenyans, uh, Nigerians, you know, all those Africans. They were taken from their countries to come and fight um, for the uh, for Europe, but you don't hear you don't hear them mentioned. You don't hear them celebrated. You know they only cel they only you know paint them in paint black people or Asians in a in a color that is uh, degrading. Um, you know it, they don't. Praise them. They don't recognize them for the for what they did. Look at what happened. What is happening now? The Windrush scandal, something like that. Mm -hmm. You know, um, these were people that we are brought when uh, they were needed. When they mm -hmm. was, they were needed. But they came and uh, gave all they had, their best. 
you know, and uh, you know, worked hard. But they were being treated like a dog, you know, sent, they were not given, uh, you know, papers to live like a, a, a normal British people, which they are. You know, something like that shouldn't happen. You know, you can't bring people to come and uh, um, help you do something. After helping you, you relegate them to the background and forget about them. They should be celebrated, you know. I think, I think uh, the way they are doing, uh, they, they are treating other people who are not uh, English or white. It's really close. It's not something that should be done. Hmm. I think that really resonates with me personally. Um, anything anybody else has to say before we finish? I mean, I, I don't know personally what could be done to change this uh, perception of people who, who might otherwise think of other people as being less mm -hmm. or not worthy. Mm. Um, I think both black people and white people, regardless of what happened in, in, in the history, both of us should come together and then agree on one thing and one thing only that we are both human beings, regardless of whether in, in the past our ancestors treated each other differently. At this moment, we are living in a different era, and if there is any how to those the human being can come together and you know know and accept each other as human beings, I think the world can be better. I think they, yeah, go, the go wound forward. can can only be healed when you tell when you teach people about other people, so that they respect other people's culture, other people's uh, belief. Um, if you teach them about other people, they will be able to see those people as human beings. I I, I don't I believe that if you teach. Even the white children, if you teach them about, they are all human beings, they have feelings. If you teach them about history, slavery, they will see that this, we are, you know, the, the black people were treated um, without respect, they were treated no well. You know, they behave, they, they, there was uh, um, inhumane uh, treatment that we are, you know, mentored on the black people, they, they they will be able to you know see black people you know in 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 this you know they put themselves in the same shoe, but when you don't teach them that, they will not know what people went through. Mm. They will not have the feelings that these people suffered. If I was in their shoe, how would I feel? Yeah, you know? so, I do wonder. I, I do. I do wonder what you know, you know, empathy can actually yeah. do because again, um, you know, if we talk about. So here's the interesting thing, right? When when racism is discussed, you know, sometimes white people talk about oh, reverse racism, but the mm -hmm. thing is, if you look, if if you look at um, the system of racism, it was created by white Europeans. Mm -hmm. It was not created by anybody else. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a very particular system. Even the use of the uh, the likes of the other uh, Bible was was um you know placed within places in in you know the african continent and that's just that continent alone right uh, other places as well where people were told that they are inferior because of this particular scripture and so on so i i i, I certainly agree until until there's a reckoning or even understanding which i don't think we've even got to then how how can there even be a point of, uh, of 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 healing? And that's even talking before the the, the issue or the question of uh, you know economics, because these uh, various countries uh, cultures have been wiped off, eradicated, and with that their their economies crushed as well, which 
I would argue has led to so many of the problems that we have today where people um, are, are impoverished as a result of those histories that have uh, created industry and capitalized upon them uh, through, through pillaging and so on. Um, I'm really sorry, but we're going to have to cut it there um, as, as we're running a bit over. But uh, I want to uh, thank uh, Bella, Kevin and Margarita for their time. And uh, yeah, you've been listening to the, uh, the Mic Drop podcast. And my name is Larry Achampong. Thank you very much.